Hi Long Range Hunting, we're out here in Alabama doing a ballistic gel test with the new 6 Creedmoor setup. Uh, running 108 grain ELD match and we're doing a elk shoulder in ballistics gel unfortunately due to last time like I explained there was an incident with the meat and hide I still haven't found the other hide <clears throat> but I still decided to run a gel block representing an elk and put the actual elk shoulder in there just to show you guys what the differences is now I've got more coming um, and I've got another piece of that shoulder. So we're gonna do another test at a uh, future date. We're gonna bring the velocity down and show you the differences between the performance on a high velocity and low velocity. And we're also gonna do it in multiple cartridges and calibers. That way you're seeing the differences in performance across the board. Just had a quick time today. It's actually just starting to rain. So, I mean, I literally, I was going to set up the Tacticam and run it. I literally had time to just set up the gel, run back, drive back to the uh, shooting line, and crank out a round. So, <clears throat> you'll find the results interesting. Um, impact velocity, I'll have to look again, but it's somewhere around 2,500 feet per second. So, I'll download everything once I get back and brief you guys on that. So, everybody. Enjoy, happy hunting. It's me again, and as promised, we're here to give the breakdown of this. Now again, this was done with some Hornady match that I got from a, a buddy who was nice enough to find that for me. And what, we're, what we did is the elk high shoulder shot. And what I wanna do is just break this down to you. Um, I've already talked a bunch about in the field, the actual impact velocity was 2550, and we got great performance. So this is an actual elk shoulder blade uh, it was sent to me from a buddy of mine, Paul, from Best of the West, Arizona. I really appreciate it, brother. Thank you for the help. Um, now, we do still have more sections of it that I am going to be putting in. And he's hooking me up with another shoulder that he found. So we're going to continue to do this. Now, jumping straight into it, I'm going to let you watch the slow motion real quick and see that. And then we'll talk about the permanent wound cavity. As you can see, that's a good transfer of energy, a nice large wounding. You can see the bucket actually expanding underneath it. Now the bucket was broken prior by the last test, but you can see that it expands that bucket. It's dumping energy, not only into that, but downward. So just great performance. Now something I want to debunk real quick. Uh, this is a higher velocity shot. It's with a six Creedmoor. Um, and it's with an ELD match and people say that, you know, these bullets will blow, will blow up. You see the fragmentation here and that's just as that bullet expands, parts of that bullet are coming off as it's blowing through just because of sheer force. Now that's good terminal ballistics. It's not a bad thing. Now the bullet itself. Held together, it mushroomed, it expanded. You can see it, it's in one piece. And again, this was a high velocity shot. And even the last test with the uh, impact velocity of 2950. Same result, a nice expanded bullet. So people tend to see pieces and think that it blew up. A little fragmentation is not a bad thing. It's great for wounding. It's great performance. Um, now, what we're going to talk about real quick is the damage to the gel as far as the permanent wound cavity. Now, as you can see, this is where I cut out the, uh, the blade from where it was. Now, if you can see all this, I mean, it just, it absolutely obliterated that 
bone. And I mean, again, a lot of people don't realize they're not that thick. People overestimate the shoulders is because they see it when they pull it off and there's all this meat, there's meat on it and bone and they think, oh, that's super thick. It's super thick bone. It's really not. The difference between that and a white tail is just a minute difference. Um, as far as our wound cavity, it really started to open up right after the shoulder, a little bit in from there, which again is normal. Um, and the widest point we got was two and a quarter inches on the permanent wound cavity. Now, you can see that's nice, it's nasty. Great permanent wound cavity from that. And again, this, this isn't some giant magnum, this is a 108 grain bullet and you can get this type of performance. Here's the thing too, and I've talked about this previous, but I wanna reiterate it. These results are what you would see if you're going through straight tissue. So if this was an elk's neck and it's just hide and then just meat and everything, this is the type of stuff you're gonna see. Inside the lungs, so if you hit a high shoulder shot, it would be going into the lungs. Those lungs are mainly just like two balloons full of air. There's not a lot in there. People have a misconception because when they shoot it and then cut it open, there's all that blood and everything inside the chest cavity. That's not how it is. And so you're going to get a lot more of that temporary wound cavity because it's not meeting the same amount of resistance. Realistically, you have hide, meat, bone, and then you're inside. And once it gets in there, so when doing these tests, you got to think that you're going to get a little bit more of that penetration and that temporary wound cavity inside that body. And so with this, uh, again, this was set up as far as more of an elk setup and it would be completely fatal. It had a nice temporary wound cavity. It would have shut down the CNS and dropped that animal dead on the spot. Now, based on bullet construction, I am doing higher than what I recommend for high shoulder. With this type of bullet, these match bullets like uh, burgers and ELD match, A tips, etc., I recommend that high shoulder be only done under 2400 feet per second impact velocity. Now, the reason I say that is just optimal performance. Is this fatal? Absolutely. It'll kill all day long. However, we want to go for ideal results. And so as that bullet's slowing down a little bit more, it's not gonna expand as rapidly and you're gonna get a little bit more penetration. And so it's about adjusting it. The higher the impact velocity with that type of bullet, the more it's going to start that cavity early and not, again, it's still gonna be inside that chest cavity. It's just gonna start a little earlier. By lowering that, you're gonna to start to shift and then eventually shift to the size you get on that lower end but those lower shots are gonna give you the ideal performance as far as your high shoulder shots. So that's why I try to recommend if, and again, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going based off infield experience and testing. That's what I find best. If I'm over 2,400 feet per second, I'm going for heart, lungs. Generally speaking, I'm gonna go for both. I'm gonna go a third up from the belly, which is gonna be top of the heart, bottom of the lungs, great shot. Um, or I'm going neck or head. So pretty much the general rule of thumb for me when I'm teaching people or recommending is over 2,400 feet per second impact velocity, everything but high shoulder. Under that, everything goes. So great results. I'm gonna continue this. We're gonna get different cartridges. We'll shoot it with the 300 with a bigger bullet and to just show the differences. And we're also gonna do high velocity versus low velocity and show you the difference of what we're talking about. So I hope this has helped everybody. I'm really happy with the results. Thank you again, Paul. And uh, thank you, Doug, by the way, for helping me out with the ammunition. Gotta love good friends. So everybody be safe, happy hunting.
people. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on notification bell so you won't miss out on any future video. And happy hunting.